multiple vendor addresses. We often find situations in which a vendor has multiple remittance addresses for payments. Instead of setting up a separate vendor record for each different address, we can easily handle this situation within Vendor Maintenance by going to the Address tab. Here, you have the option of setting up multiple check addresses. With multiple addresses, you will be able to select the appropriate address from the list when processing an accounts payable invoice, write check, or when recording a cash disbursement. To learn more about multiple vendor addresses, please watch our Vendor Setup and Maintenance Training video, VEN01. Default Coding Do you remember every GL code associated with your vendors when entering invoices or other vendor-related transactions? Most of us don't. So you may need to review the vendor history and see which GL account was used in the past. Perhaps even ask a fellow worker or supervisor, or just make assumptions about which code was previously used. Well, there can be a better way. You can establish a standard default code within each vendor record. This step is optional, but it truly can be a time-saving step when processing transactions. When you select the vendor during the entry process, the default GL code will appear on the screen. Of course, it can be changed on any particular transaction if needed. You will find that the use of default GL codes will save time and result in more consistent financial data. To learn more about default coding, please watch our Vendor Setup and Maintenance Training video, VEN01. Net days due is 30. Net days due is 30. When creating a new vendor, the default vendor terms, or days until net amount is due, is 30 days. However, many vendors no longer have standard 30-day terms. Without updating this field, you will not be able to run an accurate accounts payable aging report by due date. Also, you cannot utilize the pay criteria option when selecting invoices to pay. We recommend that each vendor's payment terms be accurately maintained and periodically reviewed. This will make cash flow planning more reliable. Rename a vendor ID. How many of your vendors have either merged or changed names in the past? This can result in creating a new vendor record. But when this is done, the vendor history is not consistent since it is located in two separate places. If we try to review the historical information, we would manually have to combine the old and new information. To avoid this situation, in Vendor Maintenance, you have the option of merging or renaming a vendor. This can be done by clicking the third icon on the top of the screen. To learn about the options and steps in merging and renaming vendors, watch our Vendor Merging and Renaming video, VEN20. Reversing a single voided check from a batch. How many times have you voided a batch of checks? and then realize that one of the checks that you voided should not have been voided. With the Cancel Void Checks Voucher Session feature, you can reverse a single check that you did not want to void from the voided batch. From the Navigator toolbar, click on Accounts Payable, Cancel Void Checks and Payments. On the top of this page, you will choose the session ID and document ID that was voided. The bottom of the page will allow you to reverse, cancel the single voided check, and then assign the proper session ID and description to that check. True North Training. Never feel lost again.